Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Disney Springs. I had to come out and try the new cookie of the month at Gideon's Bakehouse. And we also have dining reservations at Maria and Enzo's, which is an awesome themed Italian restaurant set in a 1930s airline terminal. So we're gonna eat some cookies, do a little shopping, and have a beautiful Disney Springs kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. It is 11 a.m. and Disney Springs is empty. Look at this in here. I'm normally not here this early, but I wanted to come super early so we can try to avoid the lines at Gideon's Bakehouse. I always come to Gideon's the first of the month so I can check out their new cookie of the month, but I'm a little late this month because I just got back from California, so I think we're gonna head over there first and see if we have to get in a virtual queue or if it's a standby line. On top of March being National Woman's History Month, you can see Raglan Road is setting up for their mighty festival to celebrate during St. Patrick's Week. And this is probably the best place to be on Disney property for St. Patrick's Day. It's actually such a fun festival. It is also March, so it is National Woman's History Month, and Disney Springs is celebrating her story with special monthly like desserts and different offerings all around, so we might actually try a couple of those, but I love how Disney Springs does all these monthly events. It's really cool that they celebrate each occasion. Looks like it's gonna be a standby wait at Gideon's Bakehouse right now. No virtual queue, and I would say that's probably about a 30 minute wait. So we're gonna hop in line and uh, wait to get the cookies. My California trip was so much fun, and I'll definitely be going back soon because I wanna head out to Universal Studios Hollywood. I just didn't have enough time on this trip. We only went for the weekend, but I'm happy we got to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do, and now we're back here in Orlando where it is hot. <laughs> and here is the menu for the month of March at Gideon's Bakehouse. We have Senor Pipistrello on the front protect the children and the cookie of the month is the peanut butter chocolate swirl they also have pipistrello's nitro cold brew which is a dark chocolate and cinnamon cold brew and i think i'm gonna get both of them get a cookie and i get a coffee just the way i like it but i like this cover it looks really fancy it is time and it was only about a 10 minute wait but i'm so excited it smells so amazing in here every time i walk in all right, we have obtained the goods. I got the cookie and I got the coffee, and we're gonna dive right on in. Now, I'm excited to try this cookie, but I'm also excited to try the coffee. I don't know how it's gonna go together. Cinnamon and peanut butter. I mean, maybe, I mean, it sounds kind of good. Oh, this looks amazing. Look at this precious little beauty right here. This is the peanut butter and swirl. And I wonder if they give me any other information about it. I think it's just peanut butter, peanut butter chocolate swirl. I think that's about it. So we're gonna break it open and dive on in here. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> here we go. Perfectly balanced, I can say. It's definitely equal parts chocolate and equal parts peanut butter. And on the top, you can see they have little peanut butter chips and chocolate chips. This is a good cookie. Very solid, very good. I like it a lot. Now, we're gonna try the coffee. I'm gonna try the coffee combo. Look at this. Pipistrello. I hope I'm saying his name right. Like I said, that means bat in Italian. And it's really cool looking. I love all the art. I definitely need some coffee. I'm a little jet lagged from the flight. Still trying to get back on uh, the time zone over here. Oh, that's good. Wow, that cinnamon is really, really nice touch. Nice touch with the cinnamon. Now we're gonna try the combo. Cookie, cookie coffee combo. Oh yeah. I've never been, I, you know, until Gideon's actually came about, I've never really combined coffee with cookies before. But let me tell you something, it is so good. If you've ever had, a coffee try it with the cookie you know you'd be surprised 
Enough of the cookie business. I think I'm gonna wrap this up and save it for later. There's a lot of cookie there, and we still have lunch reservations at Maria Enzo's. Plus, I wanna try some of the food for Women's History Month, and I love this cookie. I thought it was really good, and I also just noticed that they are, they have peanuts on top of the cookie. Not just peanut, like peanut butter chips, but they actually have peanuts, uh, like peanuts on there, and I thought that was really awesome. You always gotta look closely. You never know what you'll find on top of a Gideon's cookie. One of the things I noticed about the coffee though, the more you sip on it, the more the cinnamon actually disappears, and then it's just a regular like chocolate coffee, because I think they just sprinkle cinnamon on top, but it's still really good, but I wish I probably, maybe I should have asked for more cinnamon. I think that might have mixed a little bit better. Or if I mixed it up, maybe I just drank all the cinnamon from the top. That happens a lot. <laughs> Right across the way from Gideon's Bakehouse, they have Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. And celebrate her story in honor of Women's History Month, they have Nona's Homestyle Meatballs made by Chef Lori, which honestly, I think I've had these last year, and they were fantastic. But I don't think it's opened yet. I think it's actually opening up in a little bit, so we might have to stop back. I just looked it up, Jock Lindsay's doesn't open up until 12, so maybe we'll stop back there. I would love to try the meatballs again, unless I end up getting meatballs at Marie Enzo's because you can't do double meatballs. There can only be one meatball, and I think I might end up actually getting Marie Enzo's. If not, there's still a lot of other things that we can check out around Disney Springs. As we make our way over to Maria and Enzo's, I wanted to point out that the ganachery actually has a St. Patrick's Day pinata, and it's a little Mickey leprechaun pinata. Look at that. Dark chocolate pinata filled with milk chocolate marshmallows and mint ganache bites for $28. $28 for that. They do sell out, though. Believe it or not, these will sell out, and I don't think I'm going to get that today. That's too much chocolate for me, and there's a line in there already. I have eaten at Marie and Enzo's once before, but that was a long time ago. And I remember I wasn't that impressed with the food, but what stood out to me the most was the theming inside the restaurant. Like I said, it takes place inside of a 1930s airline terminal. They even have a first class seating area. And I thought that was so cool. So I'm excited to see if the food has gotten any better. And also to be able to show you guys how awesome the inside of the restaurant is. And I booked a, an early reservation Hopefully it's not too crowded in there and I'm gonna be able to show you guys a lot more than what I would if it was a crowded restaurant So we'll see and I'm not that hungry right now. I just really love the inside of this restaurant Here it is Maria and Enzo's entrance and they have a little menu on the outside and we're here for lunch today So we'll see actually what they have to offer. I'm not too sure what I'll get but it looks like it's uh, around the $20 price point, so everything's around $20. For like, you know, the pastas and stuff like that, we might get maybe an appetizer or a sandwich or something. And we'll browse over the menu once we get in there, a little bit more detailed, you know? Here is the restaurant itself, and this is the check-in area. So you got like tickets over there, passenger check-in, and then this way to all gates. And just like I thought, it's pretty empty in here. Wait till you see this view. Look at how cool this main dining room is. I love it so much in here. You can see you got gate two over there, gate four, gate one. This is such a beautifully themed restaurant. I have such an amazing seat. I'm right by the window. I can see the Disney Springs balloon. Characters in flight or aerophile, I think it's called. And it's so amazing in here. Like I said, I, the food I remember last time was, it was okay. It wasn't the best Italian food, but I really love the theming in here. And across the way, you could see the first class lounge. So maybe we'll take a peek see in there a little bit later on. Here is a look at the menu. And as you can see down here in the pasta section, uh, the pasta prices are like $23 and that's lunch prices. It's the same portion size as dinner and you're saving money because on the dinner side, some of these go for around $30. So it's kind of a good deal. And they got rigatoni al bolognese. They've got spaghetti with meatballs. They also have some paninis up here that are $17. I think I'm gonna go with the rigatoni. Haven't had rigatoni in a while and maybe I might want to get the meatballs over at uh, Jock Lindsay's a little bit later on this looks like a good menu very nice for lunch 
I just wanted to double check and I looked and the rigatoni is $30 for dinner and because I'm here for lunch it's only $23 so you're saving $7 automatically and plus I think you get your uh, annual pass discount if you have it so it's really it's really good to come for lunch on top of that, you get a nice little bread service. Look at this bread, this looks fantastic. Got some butter, and then you've got some oil over here. And oh, over there is the first class lounge. Right now it's not open for lunch, but I think I can go take a peek see in there. And also it's really cool to point out that all of these restaurants kind of connect a little bit. They run into each other. So this will go into Enzo's Hideaway and then also over to the Edison, which I think is pretty amazing. Here is a look at the First Class Lounge, Trans Global. It's actually really nice. They usually use this for private events or when the dining room is too, you know, packed. But I like it in here. Looks a little luxurious. When they decided to switch over from downtown Disney to Disney Springs, a lot of the restaurants incorporated a little bit of a backstory. And here at Marie and Enzo's, they have a little backstory. Marie and Enzo being a nice couple who decided to migrate to Central Florida in the 1920s. Enzo was a, a uh, airline pilot and Maria was a Italian cook or Italian chef. And they decided on this location in the Bandit Terminal because it was a combination of both their loves, airplanes or airlines and Italian food, and decided to serve up some classic food to the nice town folk of Disney Springs. And I think that's kind of cool. As we make our way back to the table, I wanted to show you my view outside. Look at that. Isn't she a Butte Clark? I was thinking since we're here for lunch, I wasn't gonna get the bread service, but they brought it out anyway. And also I just noticed I got a little curtain here for privacy, just in case <laughs> I need a little privacy. But here's the bread service, I'm gonna dive in. Bread looks good, nice and soft, get a little bit of oil on there. That's good bread. This is definitely a restaurant where you have to pay attention to the detail. I think it's absolutely gorgeous in here. There's something about like old like airlines that I just love like Pan Am and I also love the movie Catch Me If You Can. If you guys ever seen that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, those are two of my favorite actors and I just, I don't know, I just love old airlines. Wow guys, the food just came out and this pasta looks incredible. I am so excited to try it. I love rigatoni, that's my favorite type of pasta. I, I Sometimes I go for the angel hair, but rigatoni is everything to me and this looks incredible. You can see we've got the ricotta on top, you've got the pork, the veal, the beef, the rigatoni, the bolognese. This looks incredible, like I said, I can't wait to dive into it. Gotta put my little napkin on. Don't wanna make a mess of my uh, Mandalorian shirt. And here we go. I love this curtain here. It's really cracking me up. <laughs> but we're gonna grab ourselves a little noodle here. I love Rigatoni's, can you pick it up just by like one little noodle there. And uh, first bite, see how it is. Very good. The noodle is so perfectly cooked. The sauce is phenomenal. Oh yeah, it's a big step up. I've never seen noodles dressed so well. I mean, you can literally just see all of the flavor covered on the noodles itself. The beef right there, the little Parmesan, the sauce, it looks incredible. This is such an amazing dish right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked. Definitely a step up from the last time I ate here. Something else I like to do, I like to take some noodles and I put them on the bread like this and then I make myself a little noodle sandwich. Noodles and bread go well together. Look at that, it's piping hot, still steaming. I also like to take a big loaf of Italian bread, hollow out the end, and then put some pasta inside there. It's a good little trick there. That's what I learned from Scranton. All right, enough of the pasta business. That was amazing though. The whole entire atmosphere, and I can't get over the price. The food was really, really good. I love my rigatoni, but I also got my discount. Let me show you the receipt. I can't get over how cheap and affordable this actually is. 
Just take a look at this receipt. My whole entire dining experience cost $20.82. That is cheaper than a burger meal at Cosmic Rays. And I got the bread service, the drink, the rigatoni. That's such a great deal. Marie and Enzo's literally stepped up their game with the quality of food, and now they exceed with their prices. And I think that's really cool. Don't sleep on it. Definitely come out and check it out if you're looking for a good lunch spot. Now, of course, every time I say something is cheap and affordable, I'm putting it in a Disney aspect. I come to Disney World all the time and I see very expensive meals. So that's what I mean when something is cheap and affordable. Of course, your mom and pop Italian restaurant's gonna be a little bit more cheaper. In fact, I don't even know because the last time I ate off property at Disney, my meal cost over 20 some dollars. So, I mean, I guess that is kind of affordable. <laughs> Now I think I'm gonna make my way up near the world of Disney. I don't want to get anything to eat right now. I'm still a little full from the rigatoni, but I wouldn't mind stopping in Amaretz to see what they got for Women's History Month. Surprisingly, I didn't actually buy a lot of items when I went over to Disneyland, only because I didn't want to try to get them back with me, like carry them in the suitcase. But there are a couple of things from the New Errors collection that I wouldn't mind trying to pick up. A lot of the Walt Disney Studios stuff, since I got to go to Walt Disney Studios, now I'm obsessed. I'm still looking for the water tower. I would love to get the Walt Disney Studios water tower. I think it's a, a light, like it's a lamp here. And uh, I'm gonna keep my eye out for that. And then also some of the Oswald collection. Here at Amaretz, they're celebrating her story with a Black Panther petite cake. Looks like it's a Wakanda Forever blueberry chiffon cake with layers of coconut panna cotta, banana mousse, and coconut crunch. Banana and coconut sounds interesting. And usually these are actually all sold out. So I might peek in there and see if they have one available. But it is $22. It's a big cake though. They aren't actually sold out. They have a lot of them available, but there's no way I'm putting that in today. I mean, that's a big cake. And plus, I still have some of my Gideon's cookie left over. So I guess it's on to Disney Springs we go. And look at this, as soon as we walk in, we're in the section I actually wanna be, the Disney 100 section and the Errors collection. Right here are some of the Oswald items, the hoodie. Oh, look at the Oswald uh, lamp. This is actually really cool, but I really want to find that Walt Disney Studios lamp. Hopefully they might have it. I've also been loving this Mickey and Company uh, design that they've been doing. My friend Sean got this in Disneyland. It reminds me of like the Michael Eisner era. Look at this, it's really cool. Nice little flat brim hat. I might actually want to get this. They got the matching uh, shirt and pants down here. And then also look over here, they have a little lunch pail. Look at that. A little lunchbox. Ooh, and some good stuff for the home. I love it. This is really fancy. How much are these? Oh, $19.99. It also looks like the Disney pets are getting some love, but I don't see anything for Dalmatians. I see a lot of Disney animals, but where's the Dalmatian love? Look at this little sweater here, or the cardigan. They've got tons of cool animals, but nothing for little Gracie Grail or the 101 Dalmatians. They got the pants too. Wow. I would love to see a little, a little 101 Dalmatian shirt. Maybe one will pop out. I'm gonna keep looking around. Oh, look at that one's very nice. Let's see, what do we got over here? Nope. I'm not seeing anything in there that I like, so maybe we'll hop over to the co-op. They usually have some nice things over in the co-op. This is exactly what I was looking for. All of the Walt Disney Studios items. Here's a memo board right here. Look at that. I don't see the light though. I don't see the water tower. But also I love this one right here. This is really cool. The Mouseker. I actually, I'm going to be getting one of these from D23 very soon. When you sign up for a D23 membership, they actually send you one of those statues. Oh, so many good things. Look at this. I love the Errors collection. It's so amazing. This is an awesome hoodie right here. Walt Disney's Disneyland. I think they're selling these for $54.99. I also like this one up here, this Walt Disney Studios kind of like button up jacket. This is $54.99 too. Both very thick and I'm not too sure I can wear any of them for the next couple of weeks. But this right here would have been good to have in Disneyland. Wow. 
I just walked into Disney Tales, which is like the Disney pet store, and they have a new Haunted Mansion dog bed. If you guys have been watching the channel, you know Gracie, I've been trying to get her to sit inside of her Haunted Mansion Doom buggy bed, and she got in there a couple of times, but it's still not her favorite bed, and it makes me sad because I want to see her sit in it. Well, they actually made a new one, and I'm thinking she might use it. The other bed is shaped like a doom buggy, and this one is just flat and it's open. Look at that. I mean, it's still very tight. I don't know if she'll get in it. Ah, oh, should I buy it and test it out? But she already has so many beds. She literally has seven dog beds. Gracie has seven dog beds, and she uses one mainly. So I don't know if I should get it or not. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't want to carry it around because it is a very bulky item. I had to pass on the Haunted Mansion dog bed. I just don't think she would use it. She has so many beds and she sticks to the one that she likes. It's for my personal, like, like it's for my happiness. I want to see her in the dog bed. She doesn't want it. I'm like one of those people, I don't dress Gracie up that often. Like sometimes I'll put like a little sweater on her, but I'm like, hey, can you sit in this? But I know she doesn't want to. So I passed on that, couldn't find my water studio, my water tower. So I guess we're gonna make our way back towards the other side of Disney Springs. I like to come up here just in case you might find something good and I like to show you guys some of the awesome things that they're selling inside the world of Disney. I was gonna do this regardless but since we're talking about Gracie I made my way over to Sprinkles so I can go get her uh, pupcakes, her little pupcakes. Had to get Gracie her pupcakes, you know how I be. Got her the nice little three pack and these are like $9.99, but honestly, if you have a dog, they're gonna love them. I'll show you later on. Gracie's gonna get one probably at the end of the video, just for tradition, you know? In fact, now that we have obtained the precious little beauties, I think I'm actually gonna head home. Give Gracie one. I was gonna actually get my beard trimmed at the Art of Shaving, but they had no appointments today. So I think we're gonna call it a day here at Disney Springs and carry it over once we get home. The art of shaving is definitely a place I've been wanting to check out for a while and my beard is getting very bushy. Like I like to maybe shorten it down a little bit, just a little bit. I, I love my beard and uh, one of the days I want to come there and make an appointment. So that's on my must do. But now I guess I'm going to have to, going to have to shorten it and cut it myself and hopefully don't mess it up. Well, you're in luck today, you lucky dog. Your bark box is here. Yes, it is. Are you excited? You're excited? Oh, there she is. You want a little pup cake? Well, wait a second. There you go. Sit down. Now you can take it. I got to get it out of the wrapper, though. You got to take it out of the wrapper. Hold on. Here. I'll put it down here. There you go. Don't take it and run. Oh, there she goes. Gracie has her pup cake and I trimmed up my beard. I think I did a pretty good job. I keep, I, I do all the upkeep myself on my beard and then once, maybe every month or two months, I go to a barber shop and they kind of line it up for me and stuff like that and I try to tamper it in on the sides, but I think I did a good job. Not too long, not too short, looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm done with the day. I think we're just gonna keep on hanging out. Actually, I have to take Gracie out for a walk. As you've seen, she got her bark box. Her bark box comes every single month and it's full of really cool treats. Her mom got it for her and it's her, like a monthly subscription box. And uh, it's really awesome. It gets dog toys and dog treats and they're always themed. So I wonder what this month actually might be. Gracie has so many like different toys and treats. It's really so funny. And I think this month, oh, it's New York City. Wow, look at this. We got a woofing cushion, a woofing cushion. We got a rubber duck. We've got some Easter. Uh oh, she probably heard that. What is this? A chocolate bunny? Looks like a chocolate bunny. Oh, oh my God, why is that so heavy? And what's going on here? Listen to that. Why is that so heavy? What else we got here? Chinese food? Gracie, your bark box is here. You want a woofy cushion or a chicken? Which one? Hold on, here. Ooh, look at her. It's a woofy cushion. Oh. <laughs> look at her. Look at all of her toys here. Oh, now you're, you're bored with that already? You just got it? 
It also comes with little treats. We got gobble jerky nibbles, turkey recipe. Then what else do we get? Cheese, then a little sticky here, and then like a little adventure. Bark boxes are really awesome, but she loves it. She's all excited. I'm gonna put this in here. I'd like to give her, I still don't understand why this is so heavy. What, what, what's going on here? A Yummy Buddy Super Chewy. But do you hear that? I'm afraid to give this to her. She'll probably eat it, but that could cause a date. That could cause damage. In Gracie's bark box, she also has some bunny ears, which she can put on her head or use as a chew toy. What are you doing? What do you want to pet your belly? Huh? What are you doing? Can you put these ears on? Will you put these on for me? Will you put these on for me? Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like them? Huh? You don't like these ears? You don't like these ears? Go on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who's the prettiest little bunny rabbit? Huh? <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> I'm not too sure Gracie actually likes those ears. I mean, she wears them comfortably, but I think she's too busy trying to get to the squeakers. I think she looks adorable. I think she looks bonita. And also, another random thing that I got in the mail. These are the random things that I get in the mail. Well, I get Gracie's little bark box, but I also got some autographs back from uh, JSA. I went and got them certified. This one is Lennox Lewis, which is so random. And then this one, this one is Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum and Lennox Lewis's autographs. How fancy is that? But now we have to get going. I'm gonna take Gracie on a quick walk and uh, maybe show you guys, bring you along with us. Bring you on a little walk. One more thing that I got in the mail I wanted to show you to add to my hat collection. I got a Disney and McDonald's Global Alliance hat. Look at this, how cool is that? It's brand new. I've never seen anything like this. 1998 McDonald's Worldwide Convention. I guess this took place at Disney? But isn't that such a cool hat to add to my collection? I like to take Gracie to this nice little park over here that has a beautiful lake, plenty of room to run around and have fun. And plus we get to see some alligators. Sometimes she likes the alligators, sometimes she doesn't. I'm just joking, Gracie doesn't like any alligators and she's never gotten close enough to any of them before. Sometimes you'll see them as you're on like a path around a lake or anything like that. Uh, so you have to be real careful when you're walking your dog in Florida. But normally from a distance, if they see, like maybe they sense you or smell you or hear you, I don't know, but usually you can see them just dart right into the water. But she's never gotten close enough to any of them to see how she would react or anything like that. Usually they're far off or on a bridge or there's like a little walkway oh let me show you this little walkway it's actually really beautiful come on show them the little dock come on let's go this way what are you doing somebody pee there i read once that uh, dogs like to sniff other dogs pee and it's kind of like they're reading messages and sending messages back i don't know if that's true or not but come on let's go look at this little dock come on Let's go see if there's an alligator out here. This is such a beautiful view. Yeah! You could do some fishing out here. And like I said, usually sometimes you can see a gator or two. I don't know if any of them were out here. Let's see, what we got over here? Come on, let's look over on this side, Gracie. No, I don't see any gators here. No gators here. Looks like they're all gone. No gators today. It's still a beautiful lake though. I love Windermere. I love how there are so many lakes in Windermere. Seriously, there are so many lakes. And it's just nice. Oh, Gracie's ready to go. She's like, come on dad, let's go. I'm ready, you ready? Let's go. And I guess with that, we're gonna call it a day here today. Just hanging out, enjoying a nice little walk. Look at Gracie girl there. It was a fun Disney Springs kind of day. Got to try the cookie of the month at Gideon's, which I thought was pretty good. Marie and Enzo's was also very good. And I uh, got to do a little shopping, window shopping, because we didn't buy anything. And Gracie got her bark box and a pup cake. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
I enjoyed making it and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye! What do you think? You ready to go? All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, look at that face. Look at that smile. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. We'll kiss this to the camera, huh? <laughs>